start with come now is the time to worship So we willingly come and give ourselves into his hands. We surrender and worship him willingly. And when we come to him, we understand that we are the people of his pasture and we are the sheep of his. So God is the good shepherd who takes care of us. Of his hand 
just the sheep of his head, and the sheep of his head, just the sheep of his head. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come to your presence this evening, help us to understand that God is a God who teaches us his word and he guides us unto all truth. The Holy Spirit within us explains the word of God to us so that we may understand and apply it in our lives. And Father, we depend on your help this evening. Speak to our hearts. Areas that we need to trust you, help us a lot to put our trust in you. Help us a lot to put faith into action in everything that we do everything that we say and think. Help us to depend on what we believe through the word of God. We give you our hearts, we give you our ourselves. This evening as we listen to your word, speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, and so welcome once again to this evening study of uh, gospel of luke so let's turn in our bibles to luke chapter 8 that's where we stopped last week luke chapter 8 let me just take the screen for you okay where are you close it turn this All right, so sharing my screen, here we go. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 8, and verses 26 to 39. Gospel of Luke, chapter 8, verses 26 to 39. When they sailed to the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee, when Jesus had stepped out on land, there met him a man from the city who had demons. For a long time, he had worn no clothes, and he had not lived in a house, but among the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell, b- fell down before him and said with a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me, for he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many a time it had to come out of for many a time it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the desert. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? And he said, Legion, for many demons had entered him, and they begged him not to command them to depart into the abyss. Now a large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside, and they begged him to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and drowned. When the herdsmen saw what had happened, they fled and told it in the city and in the country. Then people went out to see what had happened, and they came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And those who had seen it told them how the demon-possessed man had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked him to depart from them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away. Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And he went away proclaiming throughout the whole city how much Jesus had done for him. Okay, an amazing passage, right? Let's go into the PPT and here we go. Last week we saw Jesus and his disciples coming through a storm. And Jesus had already told them that they would go to the other side of the lake. And we see that the whole purpose, the whole exercise of going to the other side braving a storm which was sure to kill them all, you know, that all this was done for just one person, you know, this demon-possessed man who was in Gerasenes. 
so it is very remarkable how much value jesus places in the life of one person you know and uh, uh, so the whole journey is because you know like he the parable that he said about the shepherd the good shepherd going in search of that one sheep leaving the 99 and this is more like that you know jesus went all the way there and after the healing was over he actually came back so the only ministry that he did on the other side was ministry to this uh, you know demon possessed man and setting him free so that's how much value god gives on play god places on one life okay so it's very important that we also give that much importance to every soul those who are perishing those who need the gospel and it's not an uh, you know it's not a waste of time sharing the gospel with one person okay as one of the things that we believe in wife say also you know teaching one person the word of god is also important so it doesn't matter whether the meeting has 100 people or 10 people or one person it it uh, needs all the sincerity to teach that you know one person the same as you know the effort that you put into teach 10 people so don't take any person lightly don't take a single soul lightly and that's what jesus teaches us in this incident now it says here then they sailed to the country of the gerasenes now when you say country in some uh, some translations is use the word country or the region of gerasenes okay so it's a land it's a place it's not a country in itself it is very much within palestine only and uh, this is the best uh, map that i could come up with uh, maybe you have a better map behind your bible my bible has got a better map actually but i can't show that on the screen so i have to make do with this map and it actually tells us where galilee uh, uh, gadarenes is in comparison to the sea of galilee right so uh, we find that it is in the eastern side of the sea of galilee and it's the area of the decapolis i have circled that part it's not the map did not come circled like that so gadara or gerasenes okay gadarenes or gerasenes this is the same place only and uh, it is east of the sea of galilee so that's the big um, you know the the blue patch that you can see is the sea of galilee the tribute uh, the river that flows into it is the river jordan and the river jordan also continues out of it and it goes right down into the dead sea we saw that last week so i just wanted to show you the map of that okay now this is the area of the decapolis deca means 10 10 cities joined together made the decapolis and this was like uh, you know a roman uh, uh, city in palestine so decapolis resembled rome in in every way okay a lot of gentiles lived there a lot of uh, emperor worship happened here so this was the land mostly populated by gentiles and less number of jews in that area so it is this is the gerasenes the area of the gerasenes or gadara okay so that is where jesus sailed to now the parallel passages that you can find for the same uh, you know detail is there in matthew chapter 8 verses 28 to 34 and mark chapter 5 verses 1 to 20 now it's very interesting that the gospel of matthew matthew chapter 8 verses 28 to 34 actually tells us that there were two demon possessed people okay there were two demoniacs in that region why why does matthew say two and the others mark and luke say one because though this one was more violent than the other and this one was more prominent than the other so the gospel of mark and luke actually hints at only one person but matthew says there were actually two people who were demon possessed so let's look at uh, you know the demon possessed man when jesus had stepped out on land there met him a man from the city who had demons for a long time he had worn no clothes and he had not lived in a house but among the tombs when he saw jesus he cried out and fell down before him and said in with a loud voice what have you to do with me jesus son of the most high god i beg you do not torment me before you commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man okay so who met whom that's very interesting when jesus had stepped down there met him a man means the man came to jesus before jesus could go to him uh, the man came to jesus now this description in luke okay if you parallel it with mark's description and matthew's description one of the best descriptions of a demon possessed man in the bible you get from this passage okay now first thing that the bible says is that demon possession is for a long time okay it's for a long time usually the man commits suicide because of the influence or somehow that man's mental uh, you know constitution is completely destroyed by this demonic possession okay till then the demon keeps on oppressing this man you know he he'll make sure that the demon make sure that he can use the man to the maximum okay he will destroy the life to the maximum and then only 
if he wants he will leave this person okay so the the time the time duration of a demon possession is a long time if jesus had not turned up there that day maybe this man would have continued to be under the possession of a demon so what does it mean it means that a man by himself cannot cast out a demon from within him demons are very powerful and cannot be cast out by a man himself now who are these demons we know that they are fallen angels and these angels can sometimes with the permission of god himself can possess people right so i'll tell you why they do it maybe you know we'll we'll think about it in the next slide but uh, let's look at the descriptions that are given here it says the man wore no clothes you know it's actually to bring shame into this man he, uh, to make him look shameful in front of other people to disgrace him okay so the man was without clothes and he lived like a wild animal he says which means he was less like a human and more like a wild animal he did not live in a house says gospel of mark he was driven into the wilderness okay maybe he could not be tolerated by his family members so he was chased out from the house maybe he would not wear his clothes in the house and you know he would he would attack people inside the house so they felt insecure sleeping with him or staying with him so they chased him out so because there is no other treatment now the jewish religious folk also cast out demons okay so they did exorcisms most of the time they did it by asking the name you know if the demon confesses its name then these people will use the name to cast out the demon and sometimes the demon does leave the person so how did they cast out demons they used to cast out demons by their own techniques jesus says that in another passage how do your religious leaders do it you know so uh, he, uh, the descriptions are not given there but here how jesus does is it is given there and it's totally different from how the jewish exorcists used to cast out demons now the man lived among the dead which means he was living among the tombs and uh, you know it according to jewish law a human being is not supposed to live with the uh, in the grave or among dead people why because it it actually makes you unclean the reason also could be that you know uh, decaying flesh actually transmits a lot of germs and diseases and a person dies so god had forbidden people to live among tombs or with dead dead bodies around so here was a man living among the tomb. now when you think about the tomb please don't think about our cemetery okay it's not like that it's actually a mountain side full of where people go and dump dead bodies into the caves and they they roll uh, you know small stones and cover up the dead bodies so this man was living somewhere in a place like that it is not like our cemetery it's more like a mountain side full of uh, holes where they put uh, you know uh, dead bodies and this place is actually far away from the uh, living place okay that where the humans live so that uh, the stink of the bodies don't come into the city also or the town so this man is staying far away from people from civilization from uh, you know entire township but he's staying among the tombs and then the man had supernatural strength it says here whenever they tried to put chains and shackles on him he would just break it you know without any effort he was able to break chains so supernatural strength is not there in humans it's actually given to him supernaturally by the demonic entity that is living inside him okay so this man so you would say isn't that a good thing that man has superpowers no actually uh, the next part says in mark chapter 5 and verse 5 he was cutting and crying cutting himself with stones and crying out loud he was wailing you know the pain that this man was growing, going through was not only physical it was also uh, something of an inner pain that he was feeling okay so this man was completely being controlled like a puppet and he was being uh, tormented by the demons he was being tortured by the demons they would force him they would control his hands to pick up sharp stones and cut himself so and that's not a good good condition to be he was feeling the pain of that the demon would enjoy doing this to him and this man was cutting himself if somebody comes close to him he attacks them also so he had uncontrollable behavior and uh, nobody could actually control him uh, there was no medicine to control him there were no drugs like how we have today so this man was completely uncontrollable okay so this is the kind of image that luke portrays about this man so was he being tortured yes he uh, the demon was actually torturing him and this guy had reached a place where you know he could not take it anymore he was at the verge of uh, you would say insane now insanity is totally different from demonic possession uh, one of the dangers that we have is you know sometimes we ignore demonic possession and we say everything is uh, you know uh, being insane no uh, medically you know some people are insane 
but uh, spiritually some people can be demon possessed our problem is that sometimes we over emphasize demonic you know uh, uh, possession and we give more focus to it whereas a person might just be having some chemical imbalance in their mind and uh, a, a few medicines would actually correct that problem but if uh, you know some symptoms are there like this then it it actually seems like demon possession it may not be insanity it could more likely be a case of demon possession now it is very strange that some christians actually think that the holy spirit works in a similar way you know when you go to some prayer meetings and all you see all these funny things that people do in the name of the holy spirit and they scream and they crawl and they 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 bark and they do make a lot of animal sounds and they also hurt themselves and people claim that they do it all by the power of the holy spirit which is actually not true it is very unbiblical to think like that why because whenever the bible says about the holy spirit he is a gentle spirit but he is a person who is uh, you know at the same time uh, you know doesn't uh, overpower your emotions and overpower your will he actually allows you free will and he allows you to you know do what you are called to do you know by your own self so you get freedom at the same time you are uh, in indwelt by the holy spirit and the holy spirit does instruct you and guide you but he will not overpower you and he will not overwhelm you so sometimes you know these uh, prayer meetings actually show uh, some kind of bodily contortions and you know you make all sense of horrible sounds and uh, you claim that it's all the holy spirit which is actually not true okay so that's totally unbiblical there is no mention anywhere in the bible about the holy spirit making these kinds of uh, you know behavior or uh, in a in a human being you know torturing himself or uh, or hurting himself or herself in any of the uh, places where the holy spirit comes upon him okay so we have to be very careful not to link these uh, you know charismatic and you know unbiblical things with um, the holy spirit which is not biblical now uh it says here um when he saw jesus sorry um when jesus met the man he had demons for a long time he had worn no clothes when he saw jesus he cried out and fell down before him and said with a loud voice what have you do with me son of the most high god okay now the demon comes and uh you know uh comes and falls down at jesus feet he makes this man come down and fall at jesus feet now the word that says here is driven by the demon okay Div- driven is actually like a horse is controlled by its rider or a ship is controlled by the oar you know that you use for paddling so the same way uh, a demon when it's inside a person controls everything that the person does you know uh, so if you want to hurt a person uh, you know not you the demon wants to hurt somebody he uses the person's hands and feet and uh, if you want to you know hurt yourself the demon uses the person's hands and feet to do that so the the demon actually controls that person so here the demon comes and throws himself at the feet of jesus why because demons are afraid of jesus and uh, uh, they jesus has the authority and the power to control demons or to send them to uh, send them out of this man so they are genuinely afraid of jesus and jesus being the creator they know he is far far stronger than them so the man uh, he came and fell at jesus's feet he was forced by the demon and the demon also cried out and addresses jesus what does he say he says about jesus jesus son of the most high god see so the man could not deliver himself jesus had all the authority and the demon is confessing what the exact title of jesus because he knows who jesus is son of the most high god so even the pharisees and the spiritual leaders never they never understood jesus as the son of the most high god many people who are blessed by jesus you know who have seen his miracles they also did not recognize him like this but here the demons have recognized who jesus is Oh, come on all right now the demon possessing this man did not want to leave the man okay he did not want to leave the man this was like a home for him and he was very help, happy in controlling this person so the demon was begging jesus not to torment him okay now this is some things that i've i've understood about the demon possession from this biblical account okay demon possession is when a demon spirits resides in a human body at times he will exhibit its own personality 
through the personality of the host body okay sometimes you the, this person will be allowed to talk sometimes the demon will speak from within him sometimes uh, you know uh, uh, the personality of the person can be seen sometimes the personality of the person is hidden by the personality of the demon now we are not told specifically how a person becomes demon possessed okay but it can happen because of some kind of invitation whether knowingly or unknowingly a person who is dabbling with the occult spiritism you know drugs or any other uh, you know uh, fortune telling or superstition all things like that uh, black magic and voodoo you know all those things can be an open door for the demons to actually get inside a person okay uh, so we have to be very careful not to indulge in any of those kind of practices now to the christian to the believer uh, you know sometimes it is not possible for the demon to possess a person but uh, a demonic spirit can oppress a christian okay. so uh, when somebody involves themselves with demonic activities spiritism and occult and all that we have to warn them that there is a real danger of them being possessed by the spiritual being which is a demon okay so we have to be all the more careful if children you know they they play games or you know read books about spiritism occultism and all that when people get too much interested in the black arts as they call it so do, a lot of books are available very costly books are available things are available on the net videos are available on the net so you have to be all the more careful what you watch and you know how you uh, you know participate in all these things so these are all open doors for the demonic forces to enter into a person now why would a demon want to possess a person a human being the reason is just like you know a uh, a uh, uh, a violent man wants to possess a gun why what will he do with a gun if it's a loaded gun he can actually shoot people whom he hates or who he doesn't like you know you you see about all these killings you know uh, uh, shootings in schools and colleges and all that when people have guns they just you know they can use it to violently attack so the demon when he controls a human being it can violently attack against god's plan and can use this human being against god's plan see so that's the reason why a demon wants to control human beings now demons also attack men because they hate that we are created in god's image so to so to insult that image they make sure that the person is either naked or hurts himself and makes himself ugly in front of other people or shameful in front of other people okay so so that we will debase ourselves that's the that's the focus of the demon so sometimes demon can attack like that also as i said to christians demons won't be able to enter in you know called colossians chapter 2 uh, and verse 15 says as this he disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him so in christ jesus we have triumph over the demons so the demons cannot possess a person who has the holy spirit in him but they can intimidate us they can make uh, you know us fearful and they can also put uh you know tempt us to be to exhibit unbelief okay it's possible by the demon but uh it cannot the demon cannot possess a christian because christ has uh, you know uh, unarmed them disarmed them okay so he has destroyed their control over us so christians are protected by the holy spirit who lives in them so we are not possessed by a demon i hope this is clear right now the demon is asking jesus a prayer request by the demon and what is that the prayer request says do not torment me you know it's a very ironic statement why because he is tormenting this man continuously both body mind and soul is being tormented daily and he is asking uh, the, uh, jesus not to torment him See? now how could jesus torment him jesus had already sent a group of angels into the abyss or a place of punishment where the angels are sent we we'll look at it later but then Uh, it talks about it in the book of revelation where these angels are chained it's called the abyss or the bottomless pit now when the demons come and request him this they ask him not to send them to punishment okay so demons who are out of line or who disobey and rebel against the will of god they are sent into punishment or they are sent uh, you know they are they are barred from active duty okay so that could happen to them and they, they they don't want to go into inactivity so they're begging jesus not to torment them now their confession about jesus who jesus is 
See, just because they know the true identity of Jesus better than the religious leaders, it does not mean that they had faith or knowledge to save themselves. See, this is not saving faith. This is just knowing the truth, knowing the fact. Now, because they would never repent and they would never surrender to Jesus, they can't be saved. No, there is no salvation for the demons. James 2 and verse 19 tells us that this is the faith of the demons and that's not saving faith. Okay, The book of James. James chapter 2 and verse 19. You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. See, so this causes an unhealthy fear in them, the identity of Jesus. Okay? But in man, when we put our trust, uh, trust in the word of God, and we believe that Jesus is the son of God, then we are saved by the saving faith that God has given to us. Okay? So uh, don't confuse this faith of the demons with the saving faith that God gives us. Right? So believing that Jesus is the son of God and accepting him as our savior, acknowledging him as savior and praying that he would save us, saves you and me. But the demon exhibiting the same faith is just accepting the fact of his identity. He is not surrendering. It's not repenting. It has nothing to do with being sorry for what they have done. It has everything to do with establishing the identity of Jesus. They know and they fear Jesus. Okay? They know who he is and they fear him. So, the identity that the demon has, you know, when Jesus asks him what, who you are, now, I, I told you, you know, the exorcists actually use this principle of using the name of the demon against the demon to overpower them. And the demon was claiming that, you know, since I know your name, you're actually under me. That's what, you know, Jesus, uh, the son of man, you know, using that whole title of Jesus actually means the demon was trying to shoot back at Jesus. We know who you are. So you can't play anything with us. You can't try any tricks with us. You know, just like a challenge. So the demon getting back at Jesus is what that sentence is all about. You know? What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you. Okay. So the next sentence actually is a contradiction. Why? Because it cannot overpower Jesus. So it's begging Jesus to grant them a wish. Because Jesus had already commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many a time it had seized him. He had, okay. So Jesus had already commanded the spirit to come out of this. Now, the, when Jesus asked him, what is your name? He had answers as legion. A Roman legion usually has 6,000 men. But it does not mean that this man was possessed by 6,000 people, demons. But it's just that, you know, there were more demons than one inside this man. Okay. So it was a group and they were telling Jesus that, you know, we are a lot of us. We are organized. And, uh, you know, as one body, you know, as one team, we can't be defeated. We are, we are willing to fight and, you know, we are stronger than you. That's what they were trying to tell Jesus. Okay. So the name Legion is just to put him off. That's the kind of, uh, you know, statement that they're making because he doesn't say his name or he doesn't identify himself as one demon, identifies himself as a group of demons. And none of the names are given, only the Legion, the title of a group of demons are given. So, uh, it was an attempt by the demons. It could be an attempt to intimidate Jesus, okay, to make him a little afraid of who they are. Okay? But is it possible? No, because Jesus is the one who created them and he knows their power and he is the one who grants them authority also. Whatever they do, they can only do it with his permission because he is the one in charge. He's the sovereign one. So you can't do anything without Jesus' permission. So here is Jesus being given an option. They begged him not to command them to depart into the abyss. These are the verses in which the abyss is mentioned in the Bible. It is referred to as a bottomless pit. It is also uh, mentioned as a place of imprisonment for certain demonic spirits, spirits who go out of line. It's like a jail. Okay, We have you know, people going out of line in society. They're put into a temporary jail. The same way the abyss is a temporary jail where the spirits are put. Revelation 9 verse 11 talks about how this jail is opened and some of them are released to torment man during the final tribulation. Okay, Revelation 9 and verse 11. All right, so let's look at this man again. The demons want a second option. Their, their second option is the group of pigs, Okay, a herd of pigs which were uh, actually grazing there and the demons wanted him to give them permission 
to enter into the pigs. Now, the question is, did Jesus know what they were planning? Did Jesus know that they were planning to kill the swine? Yes, Jesus knew that they were planning to kill the swine, yet he gave them permission to inhabit the swine. Why? Two reasons. One, these many swines, I think it's the gospel of uh, Matthew. Okay, let me turn to Matthew chapter 8, just to give you the exact figures. Matthew chapter 8 and... Uh, um, no, Matthew chapter 8 doesn't give you the number. So I'll go to Mark. Mark chapter 5. Yes. Send us into the pig letters. So he gave them permission and the unclean spirits came out and entered the pigs and the herd, numbering about 2,000. Okay. So 2,000 pigs went and committed suicide. But they were not committing suicide. They were actually forced by the demons to kill themselves. So imagine that. If this man hadn't been delivered from this uh, demons, the ultimate end of this man is they were going to kill him. See, So Jesus actually saved this man from certain physical death right, and eternal life in hell also. So here is a man being saved. But the value of this man is much more than 2,000 swine. Okay, Some people feel sorry for the swine. They say, like, wasn't Jesus considering the life of the swine as precious? Yes. But compared to the life of the man, the life of the pigs was far less. Okay? So the value that this man's soul had or his life had was much more than 2,000 swine. That was one. Secondly, Jesus wanted to give them an opportunity also. You know, he gave them an opportunity to leave the man and take care of the swine. Okay? Now, why is swine? Is it possible for demons to inhabit swines? Yes. Because demons do possess animals. We saw in G Genesis chapter 3, where the serpent comes to the garden, that uh, he was under the control, the serpent was under the control of Satan, right? So Satan himself came in the form of a serpent. So it's possible that uh, demons can inhabit animals. Now, uh, so what is the second reason? Why, why would uh, you know, Jesus allow them to go into swine knowing that they would commit? Now, according to the Jewish law, Raising swine is unbiblical. You know, it's not uh, according to the Palestine Jewish custom that you can raise, uh, you know, according to Jewish law, it is sinful to raise swine. But here was a blatant disobedience of God's word, where these people did well. You could say that, okay, they were Gentiles, they were not Jews. Maybe that's why they practiced. But the Jews had no issues with it. No, So Jesus was actually cleansing the land. At the same time, he was actually uh, freeing the man of the control of the demons okay so could be both these reasons that jesus allowed the demons to go into the swine knowing very well that they would actually do this now it also shows us something about the people of that place so they were dealing with swine which is unbiblical or you know not according to the jewish law but at the same time when they came and saw this man fully restored they were afraid of jesus why because Jesus had attacked their livelihood, you see. So having Jesus with them is more dangerous than having a demon-possessed, uh, you know, a legion-possessed uh, demoniac in the, in the midst. So far, we, they, it said, you know, that this man, because of him, people could not walk that way. B because of this man, you know, they could not even chain this man. Every chain he would break. And he was walking around naked and people could not even look at him because he was not wearing clothes. So these were all the conditions of this man. Nobody could overpower him. He was more powerful than all of them put together. So this man had superhuman strength and he was destructive, you know, capabilities were there. But still people were more afraid of Jesus being among their midst than this demoniac being in their midst. So they knew that Jesus was far more powerful than Satan or the demon that was controlling this man. So yet they pushed Jesus away because it, for them it would attack their livelihood. You see. So for them, money was more important than Jesus being there. So what did the demon-possessed man once healed? You know, uh, what, what was his condition? He begged him that he might be with him. That was his request. Now, Jesus listened to the request of the demons, sent them into the pigs. Jesus listened to the request of the people of the Gerasenes, and he left that place. He didn't force them. He didn't stay there by force or you know, by, by convincing them that he won't hurt them again. But he left. 
So both their prayers were answered. But this man's request was denied. You know, he said, "Can I be with you?" And Jesus did not allow. He said, "Go, and go and tell your home. Go, go and tell your people what I have done for you." And this man joyfully says, uh, "And he went away proclaiming throughout the whole city how much Jesus had done for him." See, sometimes, you know, we might ask for a thing which is really good, and we might think that that's what God also wants. But if if you obey what God wants you to do. it would turn out to be more fruitful for the kingdom of god it would be what jesus wants ideally from us see so this man going back home you know, it's a good thing that he requested that he be with him but him going back home or telling the people around there because jesus was not welcome there he was a witness who was left behind and this witness had the job of telling others what jesus had done for him and that proved to be more effective than this man being with jesus okay so sometimes you know when when god says no to certain prayers we don't understand why he does it because we did not ask him for a wicked thing we asked for a good thing yet jesus when he says no there is a greater purpose beyond it so this man actually went back and he witnessed to the whole place whole region of gatherings about who jesus is and what he did for him he was an effective witness who was left behind by jesus they had seen his former life and they had seen what change jesus had brought for him okay so that brought a whole deal of uh, you know uh, validity to his testimony so this man was a powerful person who was left behind by jesus okay all right let's stop the ppt and let me close this so what can i learn from this see we saw that faith of the demons is different from faith of you know, we humans right they believe that jesus christ is the son with authority to command them they believe in a future judgment they believe in the existence of a place of torment where jesus could actually send them the abyss okay they also believe in prayer for the jesus you know they beg jesus not to send them into the abyss they ask to be sent to the pigs and jesus actually granted their prayers so knowing that you know all these things does not save a person okay does not save a person so there are there is a transformation that god does in the life of this person now you would have expected the people who saw this miracle to uh, actually bring all the sick people to jesus and uh, they would have said jesus please say the word or you know jesus please lay your hand on it and let those people be healed but nothing like that happened for them money was more important than mercy okay money was more important than god's grace god being among them was not very important but they didn't want to lose the money see when jesus comes into your life sometimes your finances are affected especially if your finances are gained illegally okay or not according to god's will sometimes jesus will affect your finances in that case where do you stand do you stand with jesus or do you still stick on to the illegitimate means or the you know unhealthy means of gaining money sometimes you know we, for the sake of christ we may have to let go of certain unhealthy financial practices now pleading with jesus to be allowed to travel with him and help him it's a great thing okay that's a noble desire and especially from a newly converted person that will be a great thing but the discernment that jesus gave him you know was much greater than anybody else in the previous passages he had to go back and serve jesus as a witness where does he start he starts from his home and he starts among his neighbors and then he goes all around and telling everybody what jesus has done for him see so among his relatives and friends he was a potential powerful witness whom god left behind till jesus comes back we are those witnesses we can't be with jesus all the time but the more we study the bible we sit in bible studies like this we attend churches where they teach us the word of god then our job is to go out and tell people about who this jesus is if we are not witnesses god would not have left us behind see so we are effective as long as we keep on proclaiming who jesus is and how much he has done for us okay that's what we have to proclaim and people will be attracted to him by the message that we preach so god has given a great responsibility for us till he 
comes back. So demons have a faith that is far, far away from saving faith. We are supposed to exercise saving faith in Christ. And once we exercise that, we are called to exercise faith as witnesses. Trust him and keep sharing about him to others. And God will attract them towards him. So it's a great responsibility that has been given for us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we look to this passage, help us to understand that before we came to know you, our condition was no better than this demoniac. We have been controlled by different circumstances. We were being controlled by money. We were being controlled by all kinds of bad relationships. And we could not save ourselves. But God came searching for us. And when he saved me, everything else left. And I was made clean. Now the Holy Spirit lives in us. And we should be discerning enough to understand what is your command for us. You give us the instruction to go to all and tell about you, to attract them towards you. Help us to do it with all diligence because you have done so much for us. Help us, O oh Lord, to willingly surrender our lives to you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.